what's up dragon brood so today we're going to be trying something completely different and this comes from a viewer that we just call tannic because he has a long name with extra letters but he knows if you're watching you know who we're talking about anyway we're going to be trying a golgari kicker list now i know the only time we played kicker on the channel really was a simic list this is a little bit different but we're going to see if it works or not there may be some cards we want to change when we get to the end of the video but hey Again, this is why we do it. I take the wounds so you don't have to. But you can reward me by hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and helping us get to 10,000 subscribers. Because I believe by the time this goes live, we are now under 300 subscribers away. So please click that button for me. Then we're going to go take a look at this Golgari kicker list. All right, so there's gonna be some cards in this that don't necessarily make sense, but as we get through the list, uh, it'll they'll make a little bit more sense. But again, we're playing heavy on the kicker, so a lot of cards do have kicker mechanics because that's kind of what we're doing here. But we have four Blood Chiefsers, obviously the most common kicker card we see today, so we're gonna play that. Swarm Shambler. This is one that I think probably looks a little odd here, but we do have quite a few things that either come in with counters or make counters. So we're gonna see if this works as the one drop slot here. Three Null Priests of Oblivion, has Menace, has Lifelink. Uh, both those things are good, but later in the game, it can get us something out of the graveyard, which is also nice. Skyclave Shade, we can just play these out of the yard. This is really good to have in cases we're talking about playing against Mill or playing against Rogues, where you can sometimes play two or three of these out of the graveyard. And with Kicker, you get a five three creature, which is also great. Again, with plus one, plus one counters, that works with Swarm Shambler. Inscription of Abundance, this is just good in general. It's a removal card, it's a pump spell, it's a life gain card. Sometimes it's all three if you have five mana. And again, it can give something counters that comes back to working with Skyclave, Skyclave Shade, working with Swarm Shambler. Uh, same thing here with the Gecko. Gecko makes everything cheaper, but also gets a counter every time you play something with Kicker. So, well, actually, every time you play, you kick a spell. There, there is a difference there. Uh, Moss Pit Skeleton... Trying three of these out, uh, what I'm envisioning with this card is there are times where it'll be in the graveyard that you can put it back on top of your library, which sounds small, but it could slow us down from getting milled. I mean, this could possibly stop three to four uh, cards being flipped over the course of the game. If not, you just get to draw it, and then it comes in as a bigger creature. So nothing wrong with that either. It's a 2-2 if you play it early. Uh, so it's got a few things going for it. Inscription of Ruin, this is a card I've been seeing more of lately in different lists I've run into on the ladder, but it hasn't been that impactful. However, in this particular list, we're playing a good amount of mana, and I think with the decks we're concerned about, sometimes just making your opponent discard two is probably going to be the mode we're choosing more often than not. But it does let you get something back, which is a fair amount of cards in this list. It can destroy something, three or less, so... You know, not going to turn my nose up at it. It is pretty versatile for what it's trying to do in this list. Then we're playing a couple of Grack Maws. Uh, again, we have things with counters between the Gecko and the Skyclave Shade and the Moss Pit Skeleton and the Swarm Shambler, right? So maybe it does something. We're going to find out. Playing a couple of Hagrid Maulings just for more mana, but it is a removal card. Then, of course, we have Polacranos, which comes in with six counters, so it fits the whole counter theme. It has Escape, which helps us against the mill decks, gives us something big to get out of the yard. It's a removal card. So it's filling a lot of different spots here. Playing Myriad Construct, and this is the one I kind of hesitated on, but I figured it's a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four at the very least. If it's targeted to die, we do get a bunch of 1-1s, one and that's great. But it also has Kicker, and maybe we can kick it for who knows how much. You know, we kick it, and maybe it becomes a 7-7, seven, 8-8, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, right? And then that's great for us. So... We want to give ourselves just more options. And then we have an Agadim's Awakening, because again, if things are in the graveyard, maybe we get them back. Uh, nine Swamp, Nine Forest, Four Temple of Malady. I know, that seems lazy. I didn't try too hard. I just wanted to make sure we had access to plenty of mana. This gives us 18 basics, four temples, that's 22. Two Agadim's Awakening, that's 24. And two Hagra Maulings, that's 26. So really about 24 actual lands, the way it's going to kind of work out. But that's okay. We have a lot of cheap spells, and I think it should work. But anyway, that's the deck. I know that was a lot. Let's go hop into the arena and see what happens.
Opponent goes first. Uh, yeah, I guess we keep this. I mean, worst case, maybe we get to kill a creature, we play a creature, melt, or wreck their hand, wreck their hand. Might be the best we could do. Uh, they'll just get an all seed, I guess. Alright, good deal. Glad I didn't waste it, because I'd rather kill a hollow priest here. That is much more concerning. Uh, do we want that land? We have four. That'd be five. Kind of know what we're going to do over the next couple turns. I'm going to say yes. Mostly because if we get to turn five, we may want to, like, cast a three and a two at that point. Sure. Seems reasonable. Uh, sadly, I'm not going to strip their hand, because I think... Wait, how do I get to choose up to two? Oh, I think it was letting me, because I accidentally clicked kicker, even though I didn't have the ability to pay for it. Alright, this is a sorcery, which is unfortunate, but do what we gotta do. Probably another one with my luck. Nope, just another all seed, and that's it. Okay. So let's find out if the opponent's holding, like, banishing lights or something, because that's what this feels like. Make them discard two cards. Yep. Oh, it's double banishing light. Look at that. Called it. I feel like Nostradamus right now. I guess I wasted that. I should have bought a lottery ticket instead. But it would have been more exciting. Um. Let's see. We can play this with Kicker. Enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's do that. Let's pay it all. I started to just play that in Grackmaw, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go all in on this thing. Why not? If they remove it, they remove it. We're at 15 life. And the other cards we have are better. I mean, if they have a way to kill it, which I don't know what that would be, we could get it back possibly later with Null Priest. Oh, did we turn the corner? Yep. Making them discard those two, uh... Let's see. Crack Maw, whenever another creature you control dies. Okay, so... Let's just get in here with this Pit Moss Skeleton, or Moss Pit Skeleton first. And I am going to go ahead and pay Kicker on this one. So we reached the point that if we get to five or six mana and we're able to stabilize our life, we are going to have just a bunch of big creatures. Yeah. All right. Opponent gives up. All right. I think we keep this. I mean, we don't really get to utilize the uh, gecko for a couple turns, but if we can find another land, we could set that up. Opponent has a Hushbringer. Fortunately, I don't think we have anything that cares about ETBs. The only thing would something like this, but it just enters with the counters, so it's not when it enters the battlefield, which is nice. Oh, this is going to get annoying. So many of these decks lately. Okay, well, I need a removal card for the Hallowed Priest. We did not find one, so now we're going to struggle. Such is life, I suppose. Alright, GG's. Oh boy. Alright, we'll try this. We're just gonna gecko gecko skyclave shade. <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens. Ooh. Alright, I think we go ahead and play this, because next turn, if we need to, we could play the Hagramulling as a land with the other Gecko. 
and then have enough to Skyclave Shade the next turn. Which is pretty nice. Uh, it's also possible the opponent just wants to uh, counter another Gecko. Which creates a really bad situation here because part of me wants to... I mean, we'd still have four next turn for that if we wanted to. So, I think we still just do it anyway. If they have... Oh, I thought they were going to maybe make us have to pay one more. They didn't. Weird. Okay. Oh, Omen of the Sea. Well, that makes sense, too. So, now we have a situation. Because if they shatter the sky in two turns... I mean, well, we'd be able to get Skyclave Shade back, so that's not the worst thing. Though it could be an apparition here. And if so, we kind of want to set up for a big inscription. Would let us kill both of those. I'm going to go ahead and cast this with Kicker. When we pump up our other two creatures, if they counter the shade, it just goes to the graveyard. So we wouldn't be that worried about it. I mean, the best thing here is they're going to shatter the sky. Skyclave Shade will die. We'll get a card. Yeah, not a surprise. Let's see. Two, four, five mana. Six mana. We could Shade without Kicker and just play Swarm Shambler. Which I think is correct. With the assumption that they're likely going to try to play Apparition here if they have it. <clears throat> I mean, otherwise, they have stuff like Elspeth Conquers Death that doesn't really do anything to our board right now. Okay, there's a glass casket. That'll work. That does get rid of Skyclave Shade. That's intriguing. I can do that and get one of those back. Sure, this probably gets... Can well, I don't know. They have Omen of the Sun, probably. But getting a gecko back does allow me to play inscription with max value. Nope, won't be able to. Just to neutralize. Alright. Trying to make us do it the hard way. Uh oh. There goes our shambler. Man, please let it be with an apparition and let us draw an untapped land. <laughs> We're asking for a very specific scenario. But I don't know, their plant, well, they don't have the land. There it is. Okay. Well, let's hope they don't have a counter to my inscription. If they do, game's over, even if we have the untapped land here. If not, we'll see what happens. All right. Let's go one, two, three. We'll get back. Gecko. Oh, wow. We got all of it. Okay. All right. I mean, it's not bad spectacular because they do have the Castle Ardenvale in play, so that's a thing. But we did get a Yorian and a Neutralize. All right. I'm going to assume they're just going to make a token here. Actually, they might just scry instead. Yeah. And we have enough mana that... Oh, Maze Mind Tome. Hmm. That could be unfortunate. So I was thinking, like, some stuff we draw with Kicker, we'd still be able to pay for, like, Mystical Disputes or something if those are in play. Don't know if the opponent's playing those or not, obviously. Oh, no. 
Oh, that is just the saddest thing, y'all. This is the saddest little attack step here. Alright. Okay, that's at least a thing we can do. Uh, pass. Almost makes me... Uh, well, I guess we didn't know we had a Skyclave Shade, though. So it almost was worth it to keep a land in hand. Just so if it does get countered, we can get it back. Because if the opponent's not playing something here, I am curious as to what it is they're, they're not playing. Well, they were checking all their cards. And they had something they could play, but they didn't. I don't know what. If we win this, this is going to be a dumb miracle win. Because I don't know how it's even going to remotely happen. But we're just going to try. So it pumps the gecko. Okay, neutralize, sends it to the yard. We still get our plus one, plus one. So we get to attack for four. And we have mana in case the opponent wants to bounce a creature or something. All right. Did we do it? Did we find a way? Against a Yorian list? If so, this has been, I will call it both the most surprising and abnormal win we've probably had with the deck in a long time. We are attacking with a illusion <laughs> And a 3-3 Gecko. That is not how this deck's trying to win. Oh, that land is so critical. Because if they make a 1-1 one, one here, they can block the Gecko and still survive. Oh, and they have a Glass Casket. Oh, man, please let us put counters on this. Inscription of Abundance, be there. Ah, uh, well, you know, I tried to will it to be, y'all. I tried. I tried. All right, let's cry, see what we get. Golly, really? Okay, well, not that. So there's a lot of ifs in this scenario. Uh, I don't know if we have any other... That's not true. Abundance, Inscription of Abundance is also an out, so that gives us four total, because we can play that at instant speed. Um... And pull a Kranos, because we can... Well, not you. You you were not it. <laughs> pull a Kranos would have been the other one, because then we could cast it and still kill something at instant speed, and that, that would have worked. But uh, no such luck here, actually. And if opponent draws an Omen of the Sun here, that's still good. I mean, that gains life, blocks two things, kills off one of our tokens... So the opponent still has several outs here. Uh, like I said, we are without Polycranos. We are without any of our win cards here, actually. Alright, there's a 3-3 Shark. That's a reasonable play by the opponent. I don't hate that. Alright, let's see what they got. They have plenty of mana now, so now they can play something and still make tokens. So that's that's a real threat. Okay. Alright. We can still force them to tap a Dream Trawler. If we can get the right cards here. Oh, come on. Come on, deck. Come on. Just... Ugh. Ugh. We had so many things. We had so many things that we could have... Tried to get them to kill the Dream Trawler with this. They would have tapped it. Then we could have used an Inscription of Abundance. Would have been great. Uh, Pull of Kranos would have still done some work. Wow, just so many outs and none of them that mattered. We just failed on so many levels. 
Actually, even another Inscription of Ruin would have been fine, actually. We could have made the opponent discard their hand and killed the Dream Trawler. So that would have been a thing. But, uh, yeah, we just we just failed. <laughs> Wish I had more more insight for you, but no, we, we just missed. We had so many cards to draw, and we drew all the wrong ones. Same scenario, still looking for outs. And we still have some. All right. Oh, that is too little too late. Yep, we are out. Ugh. Okay. Uh... Sure. Play this first. Probably gonna have to go get a swamp. So we can play Swarm Shambler and a Blood Chief Stars on turn one. Potentially. Or turn two, I mean. But yeah. Probably what's gonna happen here. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm aware that I could take out a uh, Soaring Thought Thief, but it's also a lot less likely. Alright, well, we don't even have to worry about a Thought Thief this turn. Could be another Wind Robber, though. It is not. Hmm. So now we're kind of faced with the weird situation because growing the Swarm Shambler actually does have value in this matchup to get it to a 3 power. But I think I also want to shape our draws a little better. Uh, I'm just going to play this. And then attack. I mean, they might just mill whatever we leave on top anyway. But, meh. Not a lot we're going to do about it. Okay, so do we give up just the Moss Skeleton? I think we do. All right, we'll give it up. Because if I'm the opponent, I just play in block here, right? With your 1-3. Just going to Heartless act it. Okay. Respect. And it didn't have any counters yet. Inscription of Abundance. I think we do want that. All right, end the turn. Oh, that gecko is not going to survive, is it? <laughs> yep. That is deader than a doornail. Unfortunately, I wish we would have had this in hand because it would have blanked that uh, Heartless Act. Do we want to put this on top? Yeah, I think so, actually. I think we do. Because now we're at the point that if we can just start cycling 5-5s, five then so be it. I mean, they can still kill it with just a Blood Chief's Thirst. Well, drown in the lock. We make a 1-1. One, one. I'm okay with that. It is back in the yard. Uh, we will kick this. We will put that on top. And we'll attack. So this is kind of one of the cycles you hope to hit uh, against the opponent. Especially if you have this out. Because against them, during their instep, you can put a counter on and start getting these back from the yard. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like we just attack. What do we have in the yard here? Alright, that's not much of anything. Sure. Gonna play a second one. 
Soaring Thought Beast. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. It's only going to put seven cards in the yard, right? Huh. So we definitely are going to use this. It's just a matter of what do we feel like killing. And I think we're going to do this. I'm going to put counters here. And gain the life. From target creature here and here. All right, pull a Kranos in the yard. Now we just need to find a land for that. I mean, I obviously could have protected my other creature, so that's on me. Uh, just a misplay there. Not what we were looking for, but... Um... Hmm. Alright, let's attack first. Because if they do find a way to kill our Moss Pit Skeleton, we can put it on top. Alright, try it again with Kicker. Probably gets countered. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, then I don't know what the opponent's going to have here. Alright, Luris. Alright, that, that buys you a turn. They've got to block everything. But it does buy them a turn, nonetheless. Wow, where's the land for the Pull of Kranos? Alright. Sure. I'm down. This is a card we don't mind getting countered. Uh, we will put that on top. Though we do want to land here. Uh, just getting another card that's another 5-5 five five that they're going to have to struggle to deal with is okay. And again, it slows down the milling. Alright. Managed to get one there. Okay, so we made a few changes to this list. Um, we'll see how they work out. <laughs> but it's to give us just a little bit of consistency, uh, a little bit of a longer game, something to do with our mana. I think we're just going to open with this Agadim's Awakening coming into play tapped. I'll probably go with the Skyclave Shade here. So Rackmod is having a bunch of three power creatures is actually pretty nice too. When you get in those situations talking about playing against uh, rogues at all. Okay. Seems fine. That's a cute card, but we can't really use that here, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Huh? We'll attack. Sure. We'll try to flash in a creature. We'll try to shoot one. I'll just let it die. I'm good with it. I think we save our combat trick for next turn still. And we just go with another Grackmaw. I think that's what we're doing. Now, unfortunately, the opponent does have mana to be able to counter things now, plus play a creature, but, eh, you know, we gotta do what we can do. They may consider just Blood Chiefs thirsting a Grackmaw. I don't know. Doesn't look like they want to. And unfortunately, we did not draw land. We need to draw land badly here. Preferably even a green one. But, yeah, with this scenario, not good. We've got three things in the yard, so it's not so bad. Drown in the lock, huh? Yeah, alright. We'll get a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, Brazen Borrower. Okay. Alright. I think we're alright with that. I don't know what... I don't know how I feel about this breakdown of things that just happened. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, they can play that. It doesn't block anything that we're concerned about here. Uh, we obviously did not find our land, which is highly disappointing. Yet again. Is there a sand? Sure. Come to the play mill some things. Sounds like a plan. We do get to kill a Zerasan, which is kind of exciting, not gonna lie. Put two counters on a thing. That was not really part of the initial plan, but we'll take it. Like, sometimes you just gotta find it where you can, you know? Oh, gosh. This is a long way to go with no lands. Let me tell you. It's very disappointing. Two, four, six, seven. So the next thing that comes into play, they're definitely going to have the lands to do what they want. All right. This is what we're going to do. Eliminate. All right. Sure. Uh, yeah. Play a Swarm Shambler. See if they want to counter that. Nope, just Brazen Bar. Sure. Now the question becomes, what else do we want to put into play? Because a Null Priest is going to be hard for them to block. All right, I'm gonna go with this. It's just bigger. I mean, really, if we can get another land, I could just play Gecko and Null Priest. Would be great on the same turn. There we go. That took a little while. I have another Skyclave Shade. We'll see how the turn goes first before we dedicate to playing that. I think our plan here is attack here and here. I think is what we want to do. So if they have some other flash creature hasty business, we can get that covered. Okay, drown and lock, reasonable. So they're gonna take three. Kind of want to pump these swarm shamblers. Though I think we're going to go with Skyclave Shade. Oh, an opponent's showing they don't have a counter? Is that what happened? Then I don't... The, the hand's just lands? Nope. Enforcers. Okay, sure. We'll mill some cards. Another Skyclave Shade hit the yard. Don't mind that. Rankle, don't mind that. That's all good. <laughs> That's definitely not coming into play here to matter. Um, yeah, I think we just attack, attack, attack. All right? I mean, because I have to double block the priest, which means we get to kill one of the enforcers. Yeah, I'm good with that. That's an exchange that works all the way around for us. And then I think we do just go for extra dudes here. Oh, we actually can't do that. Dang it. Alright, well, that's fine. We'll just pump our Swarm Shamblers. Something we've been planning to do anyway. Opponent's at 5. Brazen Bar can't block anything. I don't know how we did this against rogues with just four land, but this is a matter of having these Skyclave Shades and things like that, you know, having the Swarm Shamblers that made extra tokens. Uh, these are all things that matter, you know? 
A Ruin Crab? Hey, Ruin Crab does something here. I mean, it's it's a legit blocker. Alright. We're gonna activate. Uh, do I want to put that on top? That is the question. Yes. Yes, we do. Because we have four lands already. So sure. Alright, so the opponent can block. Shade with the crab. Block the 2-2 two, two. Florm Shambler with the Rankle. Block the 3-3 three, three with the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Uh, so let's go ahead and play this Kicked. And then get in there. Yep, I'm okay with this. All right, we we might have done it. Oh, ugh, I don't know how, but we did. We're gonna eat a crab on the way out. It's rare you get to eat a crab. Whew. So I don't know what to do. So okay, so the things I kept in mind when we were building this worked right we won against two different types of rogues list one where we even got stuck on land and they killed a bunch of stuff even countered a bunch of things so i guess that's a win the downside is we're gonna struggle with random things like the white life aggro decks are gonna be a pain right and there's a few of those floating around i did make some changes to the list so you have a couple of extra things to do with planeswalkers so we added two murderous riders and added a couple of garricks in there so it should work a lot better now and really take out a lot of those problems. So the deck might be better than giving it credit for. However, I still give it just a middle of the road. It's like a C. <laughs> yeah, like it's a bottom tier three at best. But if you just want something fun and different and you like playing kicker cards, hey, this could be right up your alley. And it's something different than what's going on right now. And we were able to beat rogues. So that's a thing, right? That counts for something. I would say still consider maybe there's some scenarios where you might want to swap out the Swarm Shamblers for Arachnirs if you're still thinking you're going to play against a whole bunch of rogues because the card's still just better in those matchups. But other than that, I think I would leave the list as is. And in today's card spotlight, this one's just fun. It's a Colonian Hydra. Like, the reason I like this card is I feel like it just brings games to a close, right? Either everybody comes after you because they don't want to deal with this thing, or it survives a turn and then you're attacking for like 15, 20 ridiculous amounts of damage sometimes. Like the card's just cool. It's always worth something. It, it always trades well. It always sells well. One of those cards that if you can pick it up out of collection or if you're just looking for something to keep in your trade binder, it always seems to be a card that people want and vendors always buy. So if you ever just need a few bucks, the next time, whenever that is, that we go to an event, you know. Hopefully that's sooner rather than later. Don't forget, if you want this deck list, you can download it in the description down below, along with links to our Discord, Twitch, because I'm on there three nights a week. You can also visit my sponsors, Ultra Pro and Cardsphere, or you could just buy some merchandise and help out the channel. And remember, if you shop at TCG Player or Amazon using the links in the description below, even if you don't buy what's linked, as long as you buy something within 24 hours, you just don't help me out. And finally, if you haven't, please consider hitting the like button on this video because I tried really hard making something different with the kicker list. Uh, and more importantly, hit the subscribe button because that'll help us reach our 10,000 subscribers by February 1st. And we're on pace to do it right now, but I still need your help. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.